The priorities of this project um, were to address two coarse coal refuse piles on either side of Coal Creek um, that had been placed here in the 20s and 30s, some into the 40s along the side of the creek. And we had hired ATC group services over the past several years to uh, do surface water and groundwater studies. And uh, we determined that there was quite a bit of surface water infiltration through the piles as well as groundwater infiltration, which then made its way into Cold Creek and uh, created a acid loading in Cold Creek on its way to the Wabash River, which is not very far downstream from here. There was a couple of structures left from the mine that we hadn't anticipated. One looked like a foundation from a shaft and uh, uh, maybe a tunnel for transport of coal. At Kearns Excavating, we use all of the latest machine control, Topcon, GPS technology that's available. Uh, all of our grading equipment has uh, machine control, GPS, that allows us to hit all the elevations that are designed in the project. Um, and with this project, there's a lot of critical elevation points. Um, the amount of cover, the amount of uh, elevation change and design elevations for the ditches are all very critical. So having that technology and that GPS machine control really allows our operators to make sure that they're hitting the correct elevations the first time. So after many considerations of how to deal with the surface and the groundwater flow uh, through the piles, we considered possibly picking up the piles and moving them elsewhere up away from the creek um, to limit water moving through the piles. Um, that was quite cost prohibitive, um, so in consultation with ATC Group Services, a decision was made on the design to place a geomembrane liner over the top and limit the surface water infiltration. This was the first time that Indiana used the geomembrane to address this kind of a problem. The geomembrane liner that we selected to use um, is a plastic material. Uh, that's welded together to make sure it's watertight and doesn't allow any water to, to enter the gob pile. One of the decisions we made was to just cover the, the flattest slopes on top of the piles um, where the infiltration would be the greatest and then where the slopes were steeper along the sides um, not cover them because the water would move off the pile um, well enough there. One of the construction difficulties with this project was uh, being able to manage the 40 acres of site that we have here with the storm water runoff. From the south hill and the north hill, there's almost 100 feet of elevation change from the top of the hill to the creek. So being able to coordinate our work with the berms and outfall structures uh, to make sure that we're managing the storm water uh, with best management practices. And, and the one unusual thing we used was the Fleximat ditch to help get the water down off the pile without having to excavate uh, too deep to place hefty duty riprap in the ditches. We have a number of monitoring wells and they have indicated that the level has begun to drop since the liner was installed and also the quality of the water leaving the site has improved. We knew we would not be able to eliminate all of the acid mine drainage coming into the creek. Uh, we have limited to a significant level though. Uh, we may be able to address the rest of the problem with a wetland in the future. 